Ladies and gentlemen, far away from the chaotic, chaotic, I say chaotic <laughs> election that is happening in Zimbabwe, where the ballots, they are not enough, sometimes there are no papers, sometimes there is no ink, the election is extended to the next day. Well, you can say whatever you want to say about the election in Zimbabwe, but as for now, the election is chaotic, chaotic. But anyway, a lot of people are very angry at Bishop Joshua Maponga for saying that Zanopiev is going to win, Mnangagwa is going to win, and saying that plots of rigging, speculations of rigging, they are nowhere in the corridors of their ruling party, Zanopiev. But we will talk about that another time in another video. For now, let us look at the continental issues, the international issues at hand now, Bishop Joshua Maponga had a video that he did on the Aslas Corner interview with DJ Spoo, and these are some of the platforms that are really engaging in conversations that matter, conversations that build. What is the philosophy, what is the thought process of Bishop Joshua Maponga in terms of this emerging strong new kid on the block, new block on the kids? The BRICS, the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. We see that a lot of African countries have expressed interest in joining this block. They see it as a direct defiance, as a challenge, as a stand up to the Western hegemony. Hegemony, yeah. American hegemony, European hegemony. Yeah, they are really coming up with a new world order. But Bishop Joshua Maponga has got some thoughts which I have not heard from anyone at this point because everyone is praising the idea of BRICS. Everyone is, is celebrating this idea of BRICS. Of course, it's for South Africa, in Africa, but a lot of African countries, they are celebrating it. But what does Bishop Joshua Maponga have to say about this? Is it good for Africa? Let us see. I would have, if I had it my way, to actually maybe uh, suspend the BRICS conference right now. I would have suspended I would the BRICS have conference if I had right my, now. I would have, if I had it my way, to actually maybe uh, suspend the BRICS conference right now. Why? Uh, Why? That is the question. And before all of you get angry, <laughs> Do you think that it's a good idea to suspend the BRIC conference right now? I would have if I had it my way to actually maybe uh, suspend the BRICS conference right now. Why? Um, the, the BRICS idea has run ahead of the African idea. We are going to be dragged into another spectrum of international participation without national consolidation. So what we have in BRICS is Brazil, Russia, South Africa, India, and, and, you know, instead actually of the whole African continent coming up with its, with its currency, then it won't be BRICS. Maybe it must be uh, BRAX, because now Africa is in. Then it's, it's Brazil, which is a continent. It's China, which is a continent. It's Russia and India, which are continents. <laughs> then here you pick up a country, South Africa. Don't you find something not gelling mm. nicely there? Mm. Then if we needed the consolidation, the, the, the A part, the BRICS part, the South African part, the S part must be an A rather than an S. Isn't then, it what, what, what Gaddafi was trying to do? And that's, what, that's where we're going to go to today. And I think we need to start studying the different breed of polit politicians that are coming into the African space now. Hey! <laughs> think of what he just said. All these other partners, they are coming as continents. Yes, you can rightly describe them as countries, but the way they perform and the population that they have, they can be rightly described as continents. You look at Brazil, it has got 214 million people. Russia, 143 million people. India, 1.4 billion. China, 1.4 billion. And South Africa is coming with a slightly 260 million people. So it's only South Africa which is emerging as a country in this coalition and all others they are coming as continents. 
is South Africa going to get that competitive advantage? I guess not so. Africa has got 1.4 billion people. And if we come as Africa, as a continent, to this coalition, what it actually means is we will be at the same level with China, with Russia, with India. <laughs> but well, probably South Africans wouldn't want something like that because South Africans, when they are part of this coalition, they will see themselves as a first-class country which deserves to be in coalition with emerging superpowers in the world. So I don't think that idea would rightly sell to them. But what is primary? That is the issue that Bishop Mabunga is putting forward. What is primary? What should we prioritize first as Africans? What should be our primary peoples? Our primary peoples, before we try to unite with those in America, with those in Europe, with those in Asia, we should first seek the unity of Africa. Because Africa will never be successful or powerful until it is successful as a block. As a block. <laughs> it's like what Professor Adam Tamara always say that, Black people, you will never be viewed with the respect and integrity that you deserve until Africa or black people as a whole, they become successful. And I think on the, on the, on the African space, the presidential concept is, is dimming because of my appetite for the African national space. The African unity, right? Yes. So I, I, I could see myself maybe in the near future participating in that space. Okay. Had I it my way, I would be calling Lumumba I'll be calling Gogo Arkana Chihombori, I'll be calling Malema, I'll be calling you know, other revolutionaries and luminaries around the continent, even in diaspora. And we, form, we begin to formulate for ourselves a liberation organization towards the liberation of the African continent. I'd love to participate there because our, our, what we call right now our nations, they are countries. Our real country is Africa. The, the real country we're talking about is Africa. It's one solid block of, of land that is just divided by many villages. And right now, what we think is African politics. I want to call it village politics. Because <laughs> the world is not at a village. The world is at a global space. And I think with this mindset of small little flags and a few little lines of poetry, we call a national anthem. Yeah. And then each country stands up with a small little flag and say, we are this, you know, we have a Sutu, we are a Uganda, we are Zimbabweans, we are stuff. And we cannot, as countries, fight continents. Maybe until that sinks deep, that China has got 1.4 billion people. China lands in Zimbabwe where there are 12 million people. <laughs> 12 billion. 1.4 billion on 12 million. You can tell me the amount of abuse that will happen in, in those kind of places. Hence the financial muscle, the, the, the military power. Your, your economy is not even a GDP of a village in China. <laughs> If you just look at it from that way, America can come here anyway in Niger, in Botswana, and etc. Botswana literally has 800,000 people. Now, 264 million budget people walk into Botswana. Abuse is rife. You are insignificant. Your population, your budgets are insignificant. Cincinnati on its own, it's a whole economy of Botswana. <laughs> this is Bishop Joshua Maponga for you coming with this thought process on the idea of BRICS, saying that it should not be a priority now. As Africa, we should not be swayed into these coalitions which will not benefit Africa as a whole, but actually first to focus on the unity of Africa. And then we approach the global stage as a block, as a block, as a block. Tarabadana to be 1.4 billion. And what really stops Africa from uniting to become one? I tell you, apart from all the other reasons that you see other reasons, like some countries view themselves as better than others, and they feel like if they unite, people will just migrate into their countries, and they have more to give than much to benefit. But trust me, there is actually much to benefit than more to give as we unite to become one block. But I will tell you the number one reason why Africa may or will not unite to become one as a block is the leadership. The leadership, the leadership in Africa, they don't want to unite. They, they, they don't have that vision. They don't want to give up 
the power that they have. Imagine they are presidents, they are sovereign, they feel like they've got the ball under their control. So they enjoy this rulership, they enjoy the power, they enjoy the dominion that they have over their small countries. So they wouldn't want to give it up so that they can be under an effective leadership which will lead the whole continent. They don't want to be governors in their respective states. They just don't want that. They want to be the head of states, the commander-in-chief. They don't want to be under one continental power. So that is the main impediment that is stopping us from seeing this come to pass in our lifetime until the African leaders, they swallow up their taste and hunger for power. And they submit themselves and say, we are going to elect or put in position, let's say the AU to be the effective leadership of the Africa, African Union, United States of Africa. Like even what we see in America, that they've got multiple states which are led by governors, and then they've got the president of that federation. Until we see that same spirit in Africa, we will never be one, and our chances of succeeding as a block, they are going to be slim, 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 slim. Tell me what you think about this, ladies and gentlemen, in the comment section. Do you agree with Maponga Joshua for the suspension of the BRICS so that we focus on the continental unity, continental integration? Like just how we are focusing on the African free trade, uh, that African free trade agreement. We can also focus on the African unity and see it come to pass. Tell me what you